Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Photoshop to Photoshop 2025. In today's video, I'm going to show you everything that's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. Now, some of the thunder of this release has been stolen because everything I'm going to be showing you, I already did videos on when these things were in beta. But there is something important that I want to show you one of these features doesn't work on my computer at all. And when it was in beta, it did work on my computer. I think I know why, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment. The first new feature I want to talk about is remove power lines. So with a single click, you could remove power lines. And this works great. You can see I have this image here. It has a lot of power lines. What I suggest you do before you do remove the power lines is put it on its own layer. So go over here to the lower right and click on this little plus sign to add a new layer. Then to get to this new feature, you need to go to the remove tool. The keyboard shortcut for the remove tool is the J key. But be aware that the J key keyboard shortcut is shared by a number of different tools. So make sure you're using the remove tool. It's a little band-aid with a couple little stars. Once you have that tool active, go up to the top and make sure that sample all layers is checked so that you're actually sampling the layer at the bottom that has the power lines on it. Then go to Find Distractions and click Wires and Cables. And with that single click, um, Photoshop will examine the image, find all the power lines, and then replace them with whatever was behind it. So if there's sky behind it, it will put sky behind it. If there's a building behind it, it will put the building consistent to what the building, the rest of the building is behind it. It does take 20, 30 seconds to do. Of course, it depends on the resolution of the image, the speed of your computer, um, and just you know, there. So that was pretty fast. It removed all those power lines. If I had to do that manually, that would take a really long time. So that works great. The next new feature, though, doesn't work for me at all. And it used to work in the beta version. You may remember in one of my previous videos, I demonstrate how to remove distractions, people. Specifically, I use this image. And these two people don't belong in the scene. So they're distractions. And in that video, I really was very simply just clicked a button and it removed them. Now, again, I'm on the background layer. Optionally, you can put it on its own layer if you want to. Then again, you would go to the remove tool, keyboard shortcut J, then make sure you're sampling all the layers, then go to find distractions, people. And in this official release of this feature, every single time I do this, it says couldn't find any people who are not the subject of the image. Every single time it does that. You may remember in that previous video, I used this image. This is uh, Ohio State University Stadium. I don't know what they call it. It's the Big Horseshoe Stadium in, in Columbus, Ohio. And if, again, if I go, I could put it on its own layer if I want, but just save time. Let's just go up to find it, uh, distractions, people. And in that video, it removed all the people that were here in the foreground. And you can see that it's not doing it. I think think the reason why this isn't working on my computer is it's incompatible for some reason with my graphics card. The reason why I say that is that it does work on my MacBook Pro. It doesn't work on my iMac. And I have kind of a history with an issue with my iMac in that you may remember some time ago, Lightroom Classic and Lightroom in general and Adobe Camera Raw had... Um, people masking. It still has people masking, right? So you could mask a person and you could mask their teeth and whiten their teeth, mask their eyes to enhance their eyes, and so on. Um, that worked when it first came out. Then all of a sudden it stopped working on my iMac, but it worked on my MacBook. I contacted Adobe about it and they told me that it was incompatible with the graphics card that was in my iMac. And there was nothing I could do about it. Then about three or four months later, uh, there was an update to Lightroom, and all of a sudden it started working on my iMac again. So they didn't call it a bug. They called it an incompatibility with my graphics card on my iMac. I'm thinking that is what is going on here. There's something with the graphics card of my iMac that this remove people option doesn't like, and it can't find the people. So if this is happening to you, I suspect it's your graphics card. As far as I know, there is not a workaround. There is nothing you could do. There's not a setting you could change or anything like that. So it's just something you're going to have to live with. If you did have an image like this and it doesn't work, you would, you could still get rid of the people. Go to the remove tool, 
You could again put it on its whole layer if you'd like. Uh, just make sure you're using a plus brush. Then, like I would do like one or two people at a time. I wouldn't try to do all of them at the same time. So I would paint one person, click the little check mark, get rid of that person, paint a second person, click on the little check mark, get rid of them, and so on. So you'd have to do it manually, and it's going to take a little longer. You could still do it, but again, it just isn't as convenient as if the Find Distractions People option actually worked. Now, another thing uh, they've done is they're now using Firefly 3 for all their generative AI functions. And from what I'm being told is Firefly 3 is a big improvement over Firefly 2. Personally, I don't know that for a fact uh, because I don't use generative functionality in Photoshop myself. The only time I ever use it is when I demo it in a video like this. So, for example, I have this image here, and let's say I want to put a sandcastle on the sand. So I would get the lasso tool, and I want to put it off to the right a little bit. So I'm just going to get a mask a big area here, or draw a big area of a selection. So you now you can see I have this marching ants. I will go to the contextual taskbar. By the way, if you don't see it, go up to the window menu. And then towards the bottom, make sure contextual taskbar has a check mark next to it. I'm going to click on generative fill, and I'm going to write sandcastle. And I don't know if sandcastle is one or two words, but we're going to try one word, and we're going to click generate. Now, if you're not familiar with generative AI in Photoshop, it's going to give me three variations of this. It's actually sending the image up to Adobe, and it's going to be done on their servers. And it's using something called uh, generative AI credits. You get a certain number of those. Uh, to use. Um, so uh, you could, you know, run out of generative AI credits if you use too many, I guess. But I did a video on that too. But right now, let's look at the three options or the three variations it gave me. This one to me stinks. Uh, that one is much better. And there, I put a person in there and that doesn't look right. Now, I don't like any of them. So I could click generate again. Before I do that, I could change my prompt, maybe try a two-word sandcastle and click generate and it will give me three different variations again of sandcastles and hopefully they're better than what I they are. I could have wrote maybe elaborate sandcastle or you know award-winning sandcastle or something like that to make it more elaborate and that's a little better. And you get kind of something there I don't know what that is but you could see you get the three variations of sandcastles. So uh you know, supposedly Firefly 3 is an improvement over Firefly 2. Uh, you be the judge if you do stuff like this a lot. Let's go to another image. Uh, with Firefly 2, also when you like are removing a background and replacing it with something else, it supposedly works great. Uh, so I have this image of the two models. Obviously, they probably just went shopping. There's a couple little shopping bags over here. Let's just remove the background. So we'll click remove background on the contextual taskbar. And you see, did a great job of removing the background. Now we're going to generate a background, and I'm going to generate a brick wall. All right, some simple. So we're going to click Generate, and it will again give us three variations of this case of a brick wall behind the two models. And um, just messing around with this in the past when I did videos on it, it does seem to work uh, pretty good, although that's a horrible example right there. And there's a nice one, and there's um, like a broken brick wall. I don't like any of these. Go with three more. But kind of made a layer on me. But actually, I thought it works better now than it did in the past. Although those first three variations were horrible. I like that one. That one's good. And that one's good. So the second three were better than the first three. Uh, but there's that. Another uh, generative AI uh, function is when you use generative expand. So I have this image of our dog. I'll go to the crop tool. And obviously, uh, the phot photographer here was horrible, whoever he was. I don't know who he was, but I uh, cut off the butt of the dog. So let's just come in here and add the butt of the dog back. So we're going to go off this way like that. And we're going to make sure that we're going here to generative expand. All right. So right to this uh, drop down. So make sure you're using generative expand and click the little check mark. And then... Theoretically, it will fill in uh, those areas that are missing, and it will look like it belongs, like it's not 
fake. It is going to give us three variations, uh, so we could choose the best variation um, to go with, or we could generate three more. And that actually looks pretty good, and that actually probably looks like he looks. He's in his bed right now as I look over my right shoulder. Uh, yeah, all those pretty much look like him. So, uh, yeah, I like that middle one, I think, the best. The first one or the middle one. So either way, uh, that is, again, using Firefly 3 to do that, and it's uh, supposedly an improvement over previous versions of Firefly, and that's really it for this video. That's uh, what's new, and as I mentioned, a lot of these new features were in beta. All these new features were in beta, and I did videos on all of them except maybe Firefly 3 because it's not something I do a lot. Um, but anyway, that's it. That's what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Photoshop, Photoshop 2025. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.